good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and your old pal, Ja. We're making our way through Colorado right now, en route to Utah, en route to final destination, Las Vegas. We have some awesome stops along the way. Days with Jordan the Lion, and you all, and Ja begins now. That's right, I said you too. Tell them our first destination is we're going to childhood home of Butch Cassidy. This could have been an eight hour trip today to get there, but I just saw some really cool things a little off our route that I wanted to check out. So it's actually gonna be a 10 hour drive today. If everything goes well, it'll be worth it. Fun drive though. It's that time. We showed you when we came into Colorado. Now we're showing you that we're leaving beautiful Colorado. Hello, Utah. I always said if I came to Utah again, I was gonna go to Moab, but I'm not gonna make it this time. Maybe on the way back through though. That's kind of the plan. Hey dude, their slogan is life elevated. Are you ready to get elevated? Got this trail real quick and see Harley's Dome. Utah's pretty windy. Absolutely great scenery out here. Oh, that's a sign for Moab, Dead Horse Point. That's where the Thelma and Louise jump was. Lots of classic westerns filmed out there. I definitely want to get out there. I just don't want to rush. I want to really have time. snow again any kind of roadside thing we find we got to see sometimes seems like I saw some of these painted like soda cans in Florida also big tanks after hours and hours of windy driving we finally see a little hope in the distance here What an excursion today already. We're like halfway through our drive. All right, there it is over there. Five hours of driving, we finally made it. Butch Cassidy's boyhood home, Robert Leroy Parker. The first home of the leader of the Wild Bunch. He was kind of known, Butch Cassidy was kind of known as like the, the charming Robin Hood of outlaws. He was more about the train robberies of like mining companies robbing their payroll and he was very generous with the money that he did end up having throughout his life. So. See here it says Robert Leroy Parker, aka Butch Cassidy, lived here with his family from 1880 to around 1884. He was 14 when his family moved here and about 18 when he left. Research about Parker's life here is ongoing. Shows he was a fun big brother, loved dancing and racing horses, liked to read, 
was a hard worker and was kind to animals. And right over here they have a plaque that's talking about his, you know, in the end, basically he was never really, even when he was caught for different things, it was, they drummed up fake charges. So he ended up, he and Butch Cass, well, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid eventually ended up in South America. And it's said that that's where they died. But there was also people that said 20 years after they supposedly died, they got visited by Butch. So it says on here, on November 8th of 1901, the Salt Lake Tribune reported Butch Cassidy has more lives than a dozen cats and is ubiquitous is more than a match for the his multitudinous lives. He has been killed time and again within the past five years. He has also taken part in every notorious robbery during that time. Butch Cassidy evidently is not a mere man. He is a criminal syndicate. So he was being blamed for things. <laughs> That's why they, you know, a lot of people don't really know because they said that he went down there, but then there were a lot of outlaws because the Wild West was changing so much that they went down there also. So here we've got the Pinkerton Detective Agency posting a $2,000 reward for information leading to the capture of... See George Parker, Harry Longbow. That was the Sundance kid. So they basically have the homestead set up the way it would have been in the old farming days, along with a census. Where he had signed it with his original name. Now, they were a Mormon family, so they had migrated with the Mormons out to Utah. And what I read was that after they left here, his father kind of got swindled out of some land. He bought land, and then someone else claimed the land. And when it went to the religious magistrate or the religious judge that decided these things for the Mormons, since... <laughs> Butch Cassidy's father was not as in good standing as the other man. They believe that's why the judge decided in his favor. And the family lost the plot of land. His dad talked about it constantly. Swindled out of his land. And some people, a lot of the books that I was kind of thumbing through looking for information, they believe that this is when the young Butch Cassidy before he changed his name. This is when he would have kind of started to lose faith in justice. Because it was said that he could do anything he wanted. If he, he had been a cowboy and a cattle rancher and that's where he met his hero, Mike Cassidy, who taught him how to shoot and how to ride horses, said he could have done anything. People that had hired him, loved him and would hire him back but he just he wanted to make money fast and eventually it was train robberies that did it they have glass in here but we can see inside not glass but like plexiglass you can see over in the corner there's the table and stove This is really cool, they just keep this open, it's free. Kind of like a park service type thing. Then we go over here, and you can see, that would have been another doorway. Him sitting there. And then the bed would have been back here, along with his family dresser. Small little place for a family. It is very cool that they keep it open though. I love that. Just anybody coming along can check it out. And I'm guessing all the doorways is because of how much freaking wind they get out here. You can choose a different doorway based on how the wind was going. And then here is the stove.
see who this Fred Hayes guy is. His name's up in the front, so I wonder if he's like a donor. Oh, it says he was heavily involved with funding the restoration of this historic site. He beamed at the dedication and was so delighted that this history could be preserved for and enjoyed the visiting public. Fred was a true friend of all outdoor recreation and worked tirelessly with the Utah Division of Parks and Recreation to provide the opportunity for the good people of Utah and visitors coming to this great state. That's awesome. And I read the Park Service put picnic tables out here so people really feel welcome and there's even a trail, a walking trail along there. This must have been for the animals. Looks like the door must have blown off, huh? All right, that was one of the stops I really wanted to make today. Now we're gonna head up the road a little further and see an old movie ranch. Supposedly Outlaw Josie Wales was filmed in front of some of their sets and the Apple Dumbling Gang, Six Million Dollar Man. I don't know if this is true, but I read online the reason that he changed his name to Butch Cassidy was because, well, he earned the Butch name because he worked as a butcher at one point, but the Cassidy was because of his, the guy that taught him how to shoot and ride horses, Mike Cassidy. But I guess apparently he changed to that name or started going by that name when he started his life a crime because he didn't want to besmirch the family name for his mother. Cool town. Almost to the next stop. Look at this rock shop. Looks like the Flintstones. All right, we finally made it. Greatest Earth on show. I don't know if you pronounce this Kanab or Kanab or Kanab, but we're there and this is what we've been driving all day that i wanted to see the little hollywood movie museum right in front of where we're vlogging now it's the knob hammer it says up there frontier movie town and i think i saw on that sign it said it was free even got a guy up here on a horse i got really excited when i saw that outlaw josie wales had a scene out here but also apple dumbling gang because that's uh don knotts and tim conway let's go see this museum looks like it's open from nine to five every day how cool right in the middle of nowhere oh gun smoke but no smoking here all right, let's follow the signs through the gift shop. Look at this. She said each one that I go to will have a little plaque or something saying what all was filmed there, but I actually bought this postcard, and this has a list of all the movies from 1924 to 2012 <laughs> that they have filmed out here, and TV shows also. So she said that some of these were just used constantly so they may not have a plaque. But this one, on here it says, as far as TV shows, out here, The Lone Ranger, Death Valley Days, Have Gun Will Travel, Daniel Boone, Gunsmoke, Six to Million Dollar Man, Grizzly Adams, Lassie, Wagon Train, How the West Was Won, F Troop. Pretty cool. And I'm seeing El Dorado, <laughs> Exorcist 2, as far as movies, Beastmaster 2, Broken Arrow, Wow, quite a list. Stagecoach. So this first one that they were looking at says this was used in Kenny Loggins Live from the Grand Canyon 1991. Because, yeah, this is kind of like the start of the Grand Canyon where we're at. How cool is that? <laughs> For you Kenny Loggins fans. I think he's retiring, isn't he? Right there it says 
This is the backdrop for a concert video shoot at the Grand Canyon. It's a classic example of facade construction, the illusion evoking so much more than what has actually been built. Yeah, and then you can see how it was built back here. And then right across from it, this is awesome. Oh wow, this whole piece right here says this was Gunport from this 1962 Rat Pack remake of Gunga Din. This and Ocean's Eleven were the only two movies with the complete Rat Pack. Frank Sinatra and his pals hung out at nearby Perry Lodge. Let's go on in. Oh nice. This would have been like maybe the holding area. Look, they could have shot out this little. Then over here is the saloon. Not seeing anything mentioned on this one yet. Some of these you may be watching at home on real TV or whatever. <laughs> or me TV. Here's a jail. Oh man. Somebody forgot about you, brother. Gone to the saloon. <laughs> we'll be back soon. Wow, you can see this is definitely being seen better days. This is so awesome, though, that they have this. That's the Kenny Loggins thing that we already saw. Nothing listed for this one yet. But it looks like the extension to the saloon, I see something on the inside of there. Oh, the Outlaw Josie Wales Homestead set. Oh yeah, it is. Note the fiberglass construction, the crosses in the doors and windows served as very symbolic gun sports during the final battle scenes. So, we're right here. That's awesome. So Clint would have been right there. And look, this is what they were talking about. Never knew what those were called, so. Gun sport. Guns port. And then even on the front door. See right there. And of course we want to take a look inside, don't we? See the set. Wow, this is so freaking cool. Wow. One of Clint's best also. I really love High Plains Drifter, but I love Outlaw Josie Wills as well. I'm just not as good at recognizing stuff when I see it for the first time. Because a lot of times when I'm watching a movie, I'm paying attention to the character, not so much the buildings and everything like that. Wow. Wow. There's Clint right there. Outlaw Josie Wales. Now let's see what this little Hollywood building says. says it was used in John Carter of Mars. Vintage farming and logging equipment has a movie heritage. That would be all this. In the summer of 2010, many of these artifacts served as props in the Disney Pixar film, John Carter of Mars, a live action adaptation of the Edgar Rice Burroughs novel.
And it says the production used locations east of Zion National Park to serve as a decrepit western town also filmed in Big Water area to stand in for the landscape of Mars. Well, let's see what's back here. This was one that she said didn't have a specific description on it because it's been used so many countless times and things. She also said if you go to the visitor center, they have like a real detailed list of things that were not only filmed out here, but who all was in them and who all was out here for different reasons. So let's see what this one is with the horse here. It says the little Indian. This set was first used for the James Garner, Jodie Foster Disney comedy, One Little Indian. It was built in Kanab County, along with a barn that is still used by Best Friends Animal Shelter at the original location. Oh, cool. So James Garner and Jodie Foster, that's awesome. And they work together in Maverick also. This place is awesome. I am so glad that I came here. I'm so glad that I saw it on the maps. One little Indian. Then this, the windmill, it says Vaccarino. Oh no, Vagabond. <laughs> I was trying to read it from afar, I'm sorry. Windmill was first used as set in 1996, Kiefer Sutherland's Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Part of a homestead built in Rockville, Utah on the west side of National Park, Scion. Cool. It was moved to Pariah 40 miles east where it appeared in the attic door. So it's been in a couple of things. And then over here, I'm not sure, I don't recognize this one. What about you guys? Do you guys recognize it yet? It says the attic door. I don't recognize that. They left their shoes out though. Seen better days. The attic door. This set represents modern filmmaking. It was built as modular units at a warehouse. Um, in the movie, it appears as two-story dwelling pictured below. The second story was created as a computer graphic and grafted into the final production. So that little house way in there. Interesting. Never seen the attic door. But you can also see here how the Sets were built and everything. If you've never been on a set, they just create the facade and usually just enough to use for that production and not much more usually. That's why you can see the floors are falling apart and everything. Also why it's so cool when you actually find um, something like Big Fish where they created a movie set and left it behind. You get to see how it's aged. So now let's go over here. Right here, this says, the barn used in the movie Outlaw Josie Wales. <laughs> that was awesome. Filmed in 1976. Oh wow, man. I thought so, because I was noticing it was the same color. You can actually see we're on the back side of it, right over here. That was the house. There you can take your fun pick but outlaw Josie Wales since the movie was made the property on which the set stood was sold and the buildings were going to be destroyed we received permission to dismantle this building and move it here to preserve for your enjoyment yeah I didn't think that this was they were filmed out here but I love that they moved 
a lot of the stuff. Look at the door handle. It's like a an antler. Wow. Where the horses would have been. Man, this is so freaking cool. All that tack. I love it. Sorry if I'm taking a little bit more time than usual. I just classic movie. Over here they have a little boot heel cemetery. Some collapsing caskets and coffins. Two gun Ray. He was slow that day. <laughs> Here lies Mark, shot for singing too loud in church. Oh, now I'm noticing the broken one actually has like a figure, like a gunfighter in there. That's funny. <laughs> then let's see what this, this tack and feed red building was from. Oh, it says Black Bart. Nothing mentioned for this one. Doesn't say what that was in, but let's read up on Black Bart. Yvonne De Carlo, Lily Munster, right there. This is the Tack and Feed building from this 1948 Hollywood Love Triangle with two outlaws fighting for the affection of Yvonne De Carlo, knowing that the historical Black Bart really was black. <laughs> That's Hollywood. Here's like a little mini saloon. I don't know if that's for like dogs or what. <laughs> then it looks like none of these have, well maybe the one at the end does, does have a little sign, but the rest just have stuff in them. Take a look inside the bank. Here you can see it says news on the window. As we look in closer, like an office, Billy the Kid Wanted signs. Yep, that would have been the newspaper. Yeah, if you look in through the door there, you can see the bank teller, the little window right there. Apparently somebody paid in a <laughs> horns, I guess, elk horns or antlers. Not a whole lot to see inside the bank, of course. Just somebody's hat and other wanted poster. Then over here, now we're in some sort of general store, I guess. There's a Dayton scale. More boots, somebody left their boots laying around. Here's the dressmaker shop. Looks like they make a little bit of everything. Cobbler. We were just looking at Amanda's. That was where the, the boots and everything were. And I'm noticing up here in the windows, a couple of people looking in. Looks like John Wayne's supposed to be one of them. Let's see what's over here. Haven't been in here yet. I do like all the little touches though. I've done a great job here. So it's talking about a woman who lived out here and worked out here. Jackie Hamblin Rife, movie historian, stunt woman, movie double. They have on here that she would come to the productions and pass this around. She'd get herself hired on a lot of productions. This Fort Yuma one says, original posters from two of the movies that Jackie helped bring to the silver screen. That's awesome. So those are both originals.
some of the movies that she participated in. Wow, what a cool, fun, free experience. This is the back of the store, the gift shop that we went in. They have like a restaurant, gift shop, all this stuff. Really something. And then this was the Outlaw Josie Wales Homestead. So we've been in there. And that was the door to come out of it. We haven't been in here yet. I'm not sure what this was. It says 1990 Desperate Hours. Directed by Michael Cimino. Starring Mickey Rourke, Anthony Hopkins, Mimi Rogers, and Kelly Lynch. Called a Suburban Nightmare. This is a remake of William Wyler. His movie, Humphrey Bogart, starring Humphrey Bogart and Frederick March. This set shows up as the Ranger Gate to Zion National Park, but was actually shot near the Coxcomb, a rock uplift some 45 miles east of Kanab. Its appearance as a heavy rock guardhouse belies its actual movie magic illusion. Now that we know that, can you see that now? <laughs> a guard shack, I totally can see that. There's lots of big names in that movie. Anthony Hopkins, Mickey Rourke, Kelly Lynch, Mimi Rogers. Let's see inside. Probably nothing too special. I wonder if that's from the, that must be from the movie, right? Not much. Back to the Outlaw Josie Wales barn. And this is the restaurant eatery over here, or at least some of the outdoor seating. Highly recommended if you're out this way. Highly recommended. It's a fair question. Notice they have a few signed photos up here on the wall and the first one I saw that just made me smile was <laughs> Slim Pickens. Rock Ridge, somebody's gonna have to go back and get a shitload of dimes. Yeah, I loved him in Blazing Saddles. He looks a lot different here, but Bob Steele. Well, this is Joel McRae. Clint Eastwood. There's a photo of the Perry Lodge they were talking about the Rat Pack was hanging at. Oh yeah, I can't recommend this place enough. Little Hollywood Museum and Trading Post. How you doing, Ja? Dude, you missed out. That was really interesting. Do you remember watching Outlaw Josie Wales with me, Joster? Hey Ja, you ready to get to Vegas? <laughs> now we got a reaction. Are you going to Vegas? Are you going to Vegas? You are? Look what I found. Oh yeah, you guessed right. We found the Perry Lodge. And historical plaques about tons of people. I'm not gonna go over all of them, just a couple of interesting ones like this one. It says Tony Curtis got his start here, 1949. He was co-starring with Audie Murphy, Wanda Hendricks, and Burl Ives in Sierra for Universal Studios not long before Tony was starring in such classics as The Viking. Began his career out here. Dan Haggerty. Grizzly, starting as a professional stuntman, animal trainer, drew numerous parts with Castle, lead in a feature film, The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams. The film was an enormous hit, then Dan went on to star the well-loved television series. Don Shanks and Dipper Pyle co-starred with Dan in the well-loved show. Many of the exciting family-friendly episodes were filmed right here in Utah's Little Hollywood. Of course, President Ronald Reagan. He was in Death Valley Days. That's a joke from uh, Born in East LA when they deport Cheech. They're like, who's the President of the United States? Ah, it's a cowboy guy from Death Valley Days. Uh, John Wayne. Darby Hinton, the star of Daniel Boone. Here we have Richard Boone. He was the fastest gun for hire in the hit series, Have Gun Will Travel. Show lasted six years, always in the top of the ratings. Many episodes filmed right here. Pony Express with Charlton Heston. Also, Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Planet of the Apes with Roddy McDowell, Linda Harris, and Kim Hunter. 
There's Gary Cooper, silent films were still all the rage, but 1927 Paramount Studios brought Gary Cooper and Thelma Todd to King County for one of the earliest talkies titled Nevada. And it says down here, Cooper always praised Utah's beauty. He often came on private hunting trips with Clark Gable and Robert Taylor. And then here's one for Zane Gray, credited with introducing the world to the Old West through more than 80 Western romance novels. And they actually have a room here dedicated to him with his name on the door. And I noticed that all the rooms are all named after celebrities that would have stayed here. So you can see right there is Ronald Reagan and James Garner, Frank Sinatra. I wonder if this was the Frank room because next to him is Telly Savalas and then Dean Martin. So, huh. Town's been a lot of fun, but we really got to get going. We got friends to see in Vegas. No thanks friend, we're all gassed up. It's not Nevada, it's Arizona, but I'll take it. We're making some progress. What the hell are we doing back in Utah? Thought I left this place. Welcome back to Arizona. I assume Nevada's gotta be next, right? I would think so. Two hours left in the drive. Finally hit some traffic. I gotta say, for the entire trip, this is the first time I've hit traffic and I'm an hour and 45 minutes away from my final destination. That's not too bad. And the traffic's only supposed to be for nine minutes. All right, I just missed the sign, but we did enter Nevada. We finally did it. There's the Strat. Jai, you finally arrived. We have arrived. You're happy, huh? He's happy. He's been running all over this yard. You love it here, don't you? God love him. He's doing everything he can to let the rooster know he wants to be friends, but the rooster's not having it quite yet. <laughs> Nugget, you'll love Ja, I promise you. So we actually, I, I really can't believe that Kat is doing it, but she gave me Debbie Debbie Reynolds casita. There's Jaw sitting on Debbie Reynolds couch. <laughs> yeah, we we have Debbie Reynolds casita for our stay. How cool is that? This was Debbie's private bedroom. I always hoped that Jaw would get to come here and meet Dwight. That was Debbie's dog that's in that photo right there. Fortunately Dwight passed away. There's Debbie and Todd and Carrie and her husband. These are Carrie Fisher's baby shoes. The very first pair of shoes right there. Well, my friends, we're going to call it a night. I hope you enjoyed our <laughs> last part of our adventure on our way to Las Vegas. We're going to hang out here for quite a few days, make quite a few vlogs, then we're going to head towards Los Angeles. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. We're gonna have some surprise guests coming up on some future vlogs. Thank you all for watching. Have a good night. Ring that bell for notifications. And goodbye.